quick video because I keep getting asked about my mealworm farm. I keep this in the garage because uh, you will find some videos online that say that these guys don't smell and you can't hear them, but I have not found that to be true and I don't, maybe I just have a sensitive nose, but I can smell them. So I've labeled the drawers. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen people do the drawer method and I've seen people just have them all in one bucket and let it go. I'm not sure which is better. I know this is a little bit more work because you have to sort them out and you will soon see that it has been a while because they are getting out of hand. In this bottom drawer, I have the mealworms. This is oatmeal. And then you have to put in a source of moisture. This guy right here is a brand new pupa. This is a mealworm that has turned into a pupa which is the form that they will become right before they are, a couple weeks before they turn into darkling beetles. So anyway, back to it. You have to put a source of moisture. I prefer like broccoli stems or pieces of carrot because if you get it too um, moist in here, then they will mold this this substrate will mold and then you will lose a lot of your worms so here's a worm meal worm um and then you'll see in this drawer there are a lot of pupa in here because i did not sort them all out yesterday and it looks like i even have a pupa that's been in here long enough to turn into a a beetle that's a brand new beetle that's what they look like when they're first hatched and then I'll go ahead and show you this drawer. This is what they look like after they've, I shouldn't say hatched because they don't hatch. They more for, I don't know the exact term. But anyway, the brown ones are a little bit older. The black ones are fully formed. So what happens is, and they also need moisture. What happens is they, they don't have, you don't have to worry about them flying off because if you'll notice their, their wings are not, um, usable. They, they're just hard exoskeletons, I guess is the correct term. Um, this guy looks like he's got a little split, which is probably more of a deformity or he's recently been mating. Um, so that brings me to the next point. This drawer, I know my shadow's in the way, this drawer is full of these guys. They cannot fly. They cannot get out unless they could pile up on top of each other high enough or if you had something on the sides that was high enough for them to climb out. So I've never had one escape. I've been doing this for five months. I started out with a thousand um, mealworms. That was it. And I let them go to pupa stage and then they went to beetle stage. And once I started getting beetles, what I did was I cut um, the bottom of this drawer out and I I glued it to, I glued this mesh to the top here and you'll see little bits come down. But the main purpose of having this like this is so the eggs will fall down. And I used to shake it, but you don't have to shake it because just the act of them moving around in there, as you see, they're constantly moving. It just drops the baby, the eggs down. Um, I don't know that you have to do that. I've seen mixed reviews, but this seems to be a popular way to do it with the three drawers. So anyway, that brings us to the next drawer. Now I have to close these or this will tip over. And you can see how some stuff fell out. Can you see that? Uh, when I opened this drawer. So I usually just gently scoop that back in there. Now this drawer is the nursery. So we do have to have some moisture in here, but as you see overnight, quite a few of my pupa have turned into beetles. And you'll notice there's no black beetles in here. And that's because every couple of days I'll come in here and scoop these guys out. I just use like a plastic spoon and I drop them up here. I usually just open the drawer a little bit and I just come out here and they're pretty easy to scoop out. They don't, they're kind of you know, slow. And I try not to get too much of the substrate with it because the substrate is also gonna have in it babies. 
Now you'll see here, you'll get this sometimes. This is one that didn't, he tried to hatch and something went wrong. So I just put those in a bucket and those go to the chickens. Here's another one that just, this is a pupa that just died. Don't know why. Um, this one is probably, looks like he's about ready to hatch. See how he looks a little bit different than that first one that I showed you? Same here, this one's about to hatch. I keep saying hatch, that is not the right word. Um, and I, I'm, y'all, I'm not a scientist. I don't know the right word. This is a new one. This is the guy we just put in here. He's very active still. He's not sure why he's a pupa yet. So anyway, pretty much that's what you do. You just walk through here and pull out the guys that are already hatched. And like I said, some sources that I found on the internet, they just use one bucket for all of them. And they all just grow and re, um, produce in one bucket and there's no issue. I think once you get to this level where you have way more than you started, I started out with a thousand. <laughs> it's definitely way more than that. Oh, but what I wanted to show you is what I do here is I feed these to my chickens and they like to hide back here because it's darker. So I usually just scoop them out. You can see how many there are. I wanted to show you when you scoop underneath the substrate, you can see them. Well, if I held the camera right, you could see how they, they're they all over the place here. Maybe this is poop, which would be is good in the garden, but you don't want to put that in directly. Oh, that brings me to another point. So when I clean these out after this substrate has turned into all poop, I clean these out. I put them in a bucket or a separate tray, still with oxygen, able to get to them. And I leave it for about a month. And the reason you do that, there could be eggs in here that slipped through or there could, maybe not this drawer, but definitely this drawer. When I was editing this, I realized I lost my train of thought. So I came back out here to show y'all. Um, I started talking about their poop and let's see if I can get some more up here, their poop. So the reason that I don't just discard this as soon as I clean this drawer, which honestly you should only have to clean this substrate out once it has turned into so much of that poop that you've got more poop than you do uh, worms. But what I wanted to say about that um, is that this, when you do clean this out, don't immediately throw it away. Put it in a separate bucket and let it sit or, or tray and let it sit for a month so that if there are any little uh, babies or eggs that hatch in it, you can then sift that poop out. And then you will have all your babies that would have hatched, they would still be in your strainer. They'd be big enough to be in your strainer after I'd say a month. And then you would just put them in this drawer to continue to grow. Um, which you see that the substrate is not near as high in this drawer as it is in this drawer. I don't know if you can tell. There's a lot more down here. And that's because this is my transition drawer. It does have some babies in it, some baby worms in it. Um, let's see if I can find one. Let's see, this guy's trying to hatch. Oh, he's, he's getting ready to, again, I said hatch. He's getting ready to, I don't know what they do, turn into a darkling and he'll go up in this drawer. Let's see if I can find any little babies in here to show you what I'm talking about. They're so extraordinarily tiny that you'll rarely ever even get to see one. We may not see one. There you go. See the little babies moving in there? There's one right there, right there. There's one right there. <laughs> They're very small. So anyway, you don't need as much um, substrate in here and this is oatmeal. This is just oatmeal, cheap, whatever you can get oatmeal. Some people use bran, some people use, I don't know, all kinds of stuff like that. Cat food, dog food. Anyway, what I was gonna say is, and I can't do this very easily, so forgive me give, getting you a worm close up here. I pull this drawer out usually, um, and I do go through and pull out the dead ones 
you can tell they're dead because they're black. You know, they should never be black until they turn into a beetle, but you see how they congregate towards the back. So generally what I do is I'll just get a scoop and I'll put it in the, this will go to the chickens. I'll just get two or three scoops. Yeah, I used to worry about having pupa in there too, but <laughs> I've got so many now that I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I just give that that's to my chickens, which gives them good natural protein. And that's why you do this, right? Good natural protein. So, and I use plastic spoon because it seems to do the least damage to these guys um, when you're stirring. But again, not an expert, just experience through trial and error. And, oh, how often do I feed them? I come in here, I change this out about twice a week. Take this out. I don't have any in here to show because I just did it yesterday. I take this out and I put in fresh ones so you can see how they've eaten it eating on it but it'll start to get dry and uh you better tell but yeah about once about twice a week i change that out and then um if you uh, that brings me to another point <laughs> so sometimes we have to go out of town for something and we'll be gone for quite a few days and i don't want them to starve to death while i'm gone or run out of moisture you can put them in the refrigerator and that slows their metabolism down. So we actually have a refrigerator in our garage. I'm not gonna show it to you because it looks terrible. It's just our drink fridge, but um, you can put this in the refrigerator, the whole thing. It'll slow down, slow them down to where they don't need as much moisture and they don't pupate as fast. So if I'm gonna be gone for a couple of weeks, I'll stick them in the fridge and um, they're fine when I come back. You could slow them down if they were growing too fast by doing that too, or if you weren't able to get to feed, if you were sick and you weren't able to feed them or something. Again, I don't know the science of it, but that's the research I've found and it's worked for me so far for five months. So we'll see if anything changes, I'll update. And, and hopefully that was a helpful video for you. Looking at worms for the last 10 minutes. Have a good one. Bye.